Hi everybody, it's Justina coming here to you from Miami and I'm here with Maddie. Hey Maddie, how are you doing today? I'm great. Great uh, conference here in Miami. I agree. Uh, and we just wanted to have a conversation with you uh, to find out what your thoughts are about how blockchain can help financial literacy. That's the subject of the day. That's right, that's the subject of the day. In fact, if you're in Web3 land, you probably already know how important education is becoming to all of us, but I'd like to start maybe by saying that you know, we're in Miami where the largest arena was called FTX, and that probably built a lot of trust with a lot of young people. Uh, celebrities were out talking about FTX and how um, you, know, you don't want to miss this opportunity. And unfortunately, we're here in Miami where um, people lost a tremendous amount of money on FTX. Now, could you have seen that coming? Could you have been one of the smarter ones that you know, looked past the Super Bowl ads and Sam Bankman Freed and all of the hype? Maybe. But uh, you know, any one of us probably could have like, uh, made the wrong decisions with that. So how, how critically can we think about our industry? How can we as an industry address even the most important, thing, uh, the most basic things like security that we all claim mm -hmm. to have an edge on? And um, financial literacy probably from the ground up is the key, that's what they say. I agree with you. I think that in this space to onboard the users, I think there's still a difficulty, right? It's not as simple as just downloading an app. You have a seed phrase. It's not mm -hmm. integrated into your wallets. I think a lot of companies are currently working on that integration. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe once um, the the user interfaces have, bec have become more seamless, and like you're saying, how do we build um, that bridge between having the user interface but keeping the security, um, I think that will be in a better place. So. What, what do you think um, will happen when the onboarding of the users gets easier and we have more regulations? Wow. Um, it seems like, you know, that's bullish, right? So depending on where you, uh, where you are in your trading career, you know, bullish means optimistic, right? Or uh, it might refer to things like price appreciation. So um, I think I, I'm referring to more on the like, okay, so if the user mm -hmm. now can easily be onboarded mm -hmm. and they're at the phase of, okay, we've, pa we've gone past this here, mm -hmm. how can they use the gamification process to enhance their learning? Oh, I see. Okay, so there's a lot of things you could learn about too, which is interesting. So the first thing is that, you know, we can get people onboarded more easily and that might be quote unquote onboarding them into the financial layer. Right, so some friends of ours are working with Stellar and uh, MoneyGram, right, to create able to create okay, pipes to, to make to make that onboarding easier. I think the important thing about the financial literacy and the onboarding, though, isn't just that it stops at the finance layer. When you really get onboarded into Web three, you get into the community aspect, you get into the decentralized aspect of the technology, and I think that's where a lot of the literacy is going to come from. That's where a lot of the education is also needed not just for the finance and how much Bitcoin might you have in your wallet, but how are you connecting with other humans using the new technology? Okay, so it seems like for you the community aspect is also related to the financial literacy. Very much so. Oh, we, would be, we, would be, uh, we would be misleading people if we told them that a lot of this industry wasn't about money. This industry, uh, Web3 and NFTs in general, uh, all the ICOs, everything related to Bitcoin is definitely about scratching people's itch for, uh, for money. And, mm -hmm. But it definitely doesn't just stop there. So why is it so important? The education? Yes. The, it's the year 2023, this, this world is going crazy. Okay, right? So uh, what do we have and where does education come in? You know, you're gonna have to be able to use these tools for them to be effective, right? If we want like trust and transparency, it's not gonna affect the world unless we have all people on board. Right. So there's definitely genuine utility in this stuff. And that's where the, the literacy comes in, right? We're not gonna have to use the tools correctly. We don't know how to use them if people don't know how to use them. But the fun part is the tools do exist today. We've got tools now that are leveling the playing field for people all over the world. They're just not necessarily being used correctly. I agree, so the how is important. So we have to work on the how. So like kind of going back to what I was saying earlier, if it's integrated, it's as easy as downloading something and using it, that's one thing. But you're right, we need the whole education piece around it because if a user just downloads something and they don't know how to use it or what it's really for, then like what is the purpose, right? So I think that's the education piece, I guess ties it all back together because you need to have the different layers, right? We've got institutions now that educational institutions 
who almost control the onboarding into the professional world. They're like the onboarder of, uh, you know, like you might think of an app to onboard people into crypto. You have educational institutions who are onboarding people into life. And uh, there's a tremendous, I think there's actually an awakening or something like that going on in these institutions where, in fact, if you're one of them and you're listening, these are two people that can help your institution empower its teachers, for example, to teach this new subject matter. So there's kind of, I would say there's a groundswell, um, maybe from these institutions, maybe not a groundswell, there's, just, there's a certain, um, there's a certain uh, momentum, right, where people are looking for this kind of educational content. And uh, we're two people in the way that provide that, right? So I think that that's a very interesting starting point. Um, that stuff's gonna take a while to triple through though. Really, really I agree, and then there will be the tipping point. So mm -hmm. I think for, I think we're still like working the ground up, but I think one day it will be as easy as going on your phone, downloading something and making it work seamlessly. That's what I think a lot of companies are requesting right now is, you know, mm -hmm. cross blockchain integration, dual authentication using different wallets, like, mm -hmm. Into like cross chain work, making it mm. seamless, games across chain, NFTs across chain, currency across chain. So, I think, like, mm. we, I think the companies I'm talking to now are showcasing that they are going across chain because that's where they know the demand is. So, they're not just building when they're building a product, they're not thinking, Oh, I'm just building on this one layer one. They're thinking, I'm building mm. it across chain and making it usable and user friendly. So, I think we are, I think it's very interesting because. Also, I think who's in the space, right? Who are the early adopters? And a lot of them are devs. Mm -hmm. They may not be business people. They may not be like your regular consumer. And so because of that, I also think like that's how it's being developed. We have like, for example, that uh, the fact that you can, you know, go cross chain, but yet you can't go on your phone and do certain things, right? So mm -hmm. that, who thought about that? You know what I mean? That's we're what I think something. about. Yeah, we're missing a piece so of I solution. think we need to, that's why I go back to what you said, which is we need educators knowing this, because if they do know it, then we will have more of the general public joining and providing ideas and strategies and things like that and user experience. That's right. The, the flattening of even the educational system where the student's input is part of the curriculum development is pretty interesting. That's something that we can do with token economics, it's something we can do with these systems. Skin in the game, I love it. It's Indeed. going back to that um, circular economy, going back to like, how do you work top down and bottom up? Tell me something that you're excited about in 2023. I think for me, this is a year where um, I think that we're at the conference called Quantum. Mm. I think for me, I would like to go quantum this year. Okay. So I think it's, uh, I'm looking at uh, how different leaders lead and I'm looking at like how you know a lot of people think connecting is by facts we live in a data world so everybody's like fact 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 but the thing is if you even if you look at Austrian economics and Keynesian economics and you have people with these hyper models and they couldn't have predicted the 2008 crisis yet you have people with very simplistic models how do they do it and I think where it's like we're at a point where we're producing so much data but really what you what I think it comes down to and I'll just I always go back to this the most underutilized skills in leadership is empathy because if you don't empathize you can't connect so it's basically for me I'm excited this year to work on uh, going back to human connection yeah. and when you can connect with your audience that's when it clicks for them it's not because they've read the facts it's because they say oh my friend has used it 80% of customers come from referrals Mm. So it's kind of like, yes, we have these advanced systems, and yes, we have all this, and we have funnel, like clicking funnels and all these things, but I think at the, at the basis, I think a lot of things are just demonstrated like in a way. So I think it's, I'm excited about learning how can I connect with a big audience, but yet make it feel human. I love that you mentioned the quantum stuff, because the quantum space, which is like the space that, you know, it's right here, but it's also not exactly super accessible to us right now, but it's super powerful, uh, things that kind of happen under the, the physical currents, like psychic energy, it's a transformation of people's uh, mindset on planet Earth, and I like that you brought empathy uh, into it because that is a sort of definitely a quantum kind of vibe. Like Absolutely, that, you know, and yeah. I, the, one of the, the smartest people that I work with, you know, uh, and I've interviewed, I think they're the most, like, when they talk to you, they're saying, like, we're looking, uh, ben Gortzel, when I interviewed him in Miami, he said, 
we need a quantum leap in human consciousness. We can't be treating each other the way we're treating each other. Mm. So I always, anyway, for me, I think that's my excitement for the year. It's about how do I better connect with people so that I can bring them the knowledge that I have because I can know something, but if I can't communicate it properly, there's no utility to it. And I like what you said, it's uh, the quantum field. Yes, I think, you know, in the brain, when a neurosynapse changes like it's lame, that's, the, that's like, that's quantum. That's like you, how do you, how do I shift your paradigm? If, and, and the easiest way actually over years has been storytelling. You can, if you tell a story in a really good way that's empathetic and it connects with your audience, you can change, you can shift your audience. So there you go. That's how I, that's what I'm excited about. That's exciting. And you shifted my quantum paradigm today. So you're doing it. Thank you.